we often hear about the executions of people who committed many crimes and who made their families sleep with regret for them. And of course, there are those who were unjustly sentenced to death and the execution was actually carried out. But everyone who was executed, executed, passed away? History tells us many stories of those who were sentenced to death, whether they were innocent, but they did not die after execution. And some of them were executed again and didn't die. The story of a young man cheated the gallows not just once, nor twice, but three times. John Lee. John Lee was a young man in his 20s who lived in England with his half sister Elizabeth Harris in a rundown house. This compelled Elizabeth, the older sister, to work at the mansion of Miss Emma Ann Whitehead Keese, an old rich lady who lived alone at the Glen in Babacombe. This old lady had no relatives, and they had all died. And she had a mansion with many servants. Lisa was in charge of the kitchen, along with a few other maids. Jane and Eliza Neck, who carried out different tasks within the place. While on the other hand, John switched jobs frequently because of his unstable situation, but he was more often unemployed, which made him one day ask his sister to mediate with Miss Keys to work for her in any work inside the palace. John's duties within the palace were to take care of the garden and horse stables. He worked until he was 16 years old, when he quit and joined the Royal Navy, specifically the Navy. And after a short period of time, he was fired for not being dedicated to his job. After that, he began working for Colonel Brownlow, who resided at Ridge Hill in Torquay. In 1883, after being found guilty of robbing his master of silverware worth 20 euros, he was sentenced to six months of hard labor at Exeter Prison and entered a guilty plea. After Lee was released from prison in 1884, Miss Keys, who had liked him when he first worked in her home, decided to give him another chance, as he pledged not to steal from her ever again. And he was once more employed at the Glen. John did indeed return to his job of caring for the horses in the same stable, but Miss Keys soon learned that other priceless items had been taken. But this time, she not only fired John, but also withheld his entire salary and refused to pay it to him, despite the fact that he had sworn to her that he had not stolen. Disaster struck on the 15th of November of that year. Emma Keese was discovered, brutally murdered. Her throat was slit, she had three wounds to her head, and the murderer had also attempted to burn the body by setting fire on the ground floor. The fire led to the awakening of the maids. In the meantime, John rushed outside to ask for help. Then the neighbors saw him rushing into the palace to save his sister and the servants. The strange thing is that John told everyone about the death of the lady, although he was not in the palace at the time. John Lee was interrogated extensively by the police when they arrived. Among them, how did he know Miss Keese had died when he was not in the palace? The second question was, how did he get into the palace when the inspection revealed that the glass was open from the inside rather than the outside? And the final question, to which the investigation authorities did not require an answer, why the tools John Lee was using were in the stable beside Mrs. Stephanie's body. The event that made John Lee change the course of justice. John Lee, then 20 years old, was thought to be the only male in the house at the time and was arrested on suspicion of murder. Standing cold-hearted, the court assumed he had gone insane and referred him to a medical committee to determine his mental state. According to the report, he is in good mental health and during the last session before the verdict, the head of the court asked him, why are you in this state of coldness? He smiled contentedly and said, because only God knows that I did not murder Miss Keys. Despite the severity of the sentence, the court decided on the death penalty for John because all of the evidence was against him. The guard informed him the night before the execution of the death sentence that the sentence would be carried out the very next day. 
And John smiled at him and asked, And where's my last meal of dinner? When the meal was brought to him, he ate it as if it were the first time he had ever eaten anything. Even the guards were terrified of him, and the strange thing was that he did not scream or cry, and was eerily stable on his way to the execution room, as if he had confidence that he would not be executed because he had not committed anything. In the execution chamber, the platform of execution was a long pole attached to the gallows, and at the bottom of it, an iron door was open for the accused to fall. Shortly before death, the person responsible for the execution said that he put the rope around John's neck, and before he grabbed the handle, John heard a voice say, you have to start now. And when he wanted to pull the handle, the door didn't open. He found the handle had malfunctioned, which made them postpone the execution. The next day, they summoned some experts to examine the hangar. And it was strange that it was working, and here they decided to execute John for the third time. And as it happened previously, the door was stuck for the fourth time. And they repeated the attempt several times, but he was not executed. And every time John smiled and told them, I told you that God knows, I am innocent. The official ordered John not to be allowed to stand on the execution platform again, and ordered him to be returned to his cell. They requested a meeting with the prison warden, who listened to the testimonies of all those who attended the incident, tried the handle and found the door open normally, and ordered a temporary suspension of execution until they issued an order reducing the death penalty to life imprisonment. From then on, John Lee became known as the man they couldn't hang. And his story became well known in all magazines and newspapers, and people began to talk about it. John was in prison for 20 years before being released in 1907. When he was released, his gallows story had been forgotten, and the press had lost interest in him. So it was unclear what happened to him after his release but it appears that he got married and lived a long life until his death in 1945. But his story did not end there. For many years, there were many questions about whether he was the true killer or that another criminal killed Miss Keyes and accused John. Throughout his trial, imprisonment, and execution, John insisted on his innocence, but he never revealed the secret of his strange behavior on the night of the crime. Some believe that John is the true murderer while others who have studied his personality and biography believe that he is innocent, but knows what happened that night. Others claim that the true killer was his sister, Elizabeth, who murdered Miss Keyes for an unknown reason, but when he found out, he wanted to cover it up and save her from execution. So my friends, do you think that the machine's repeated malfunctions were what prevented John from dying? Or perhaps John's escape from execution was actually a divine miracle, because he was innocent. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.